<laughs> what is going on, you guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Fit Women's Weekly podcast. Oh man, y'all, I am moving real slow today. If you missed it yesterday on my Instagram, first off, if you're not following me on Instagram, what the heck are you doing with your life? I post every single day, whether it is a workout, exercise tips, nutrition, recipes, don't miss out. Just follow me over at Kindle Boyle Fitness. But yesterday I posted the workout that we did in Fit Women's Weekly Live. And holy moly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk for the rest of the week. It included, I'll just go ahead and share it here. I used to share a workout at the end of every podcast. And then I kind of just, I didn't get lazy with it, but I honestly forgot. And then I've had a couple of people reach out going, hey, Kindle, I miss workouts. I used to do those. Can you please start sharing those again? So I will do my best to bring the workouts back. So I might as well get back into the routine of it by sharing it at the start of the podcast versus the end since it is fresh on my mind. So yesterday's workout was a interval Monday workout. Mondays are always uh, interval style body weight to help us just get our bodies into the groove of working for the week, get our heart rates up more cardio style before we start putting on the heavy weights, which comes on Tuesday. So yesterday was an every two minutes where it started off with 10 pushups and five burpees. And then whatever was left of the two minutes was walking lunges. And if you don't have a space where you can do walking lunges, like not everybody has a space like this, then you would do stationary lunges, uh, preferably forward lunges versus reverse lunges. But if you have knee issues and forward lunges just don't feel very good, then reverse lunges are fine too, of course. So yeah. Uh, as time went on and we kind of got to see the pace that we were doing, how many we could do per round, there were some tweaks made throughout the workout where by the end of the workout we were doing, I believe it was six push-ups and four burpees just to give us a little bit extra time for our lunges because I had a goal set. So we did it for 20 rounds. However, we did have two rounds of those that were two minutes of rest. So four minutes of rest total in the workout. And other than that, it was just moving. And so within that time frame, I got 925 lunges in the longer workout. And then if you guys didn't know, so every single day I go live with a workout, I do a 60 minute workout, and then I do a 30 minute version of the workout. So for the 30 minute version, we did our warm up, and then we did 10 rounds of that. So 20 minutes total. And in that time, I was able to get 500 lunges in and it took me, um, I believe it took me nine of the 10 rounds in order to hit that goal. So by the end of yesterday, I did 1500 lunges because you guys know, like I can't end on 925. I did do the lunges to get to a thousand and Ooh, it hurts. I was supposed to get up to go for a run this morning and that wasn't going to happen. I listened to my body. I did go for a really good walk this morning just to get my body moving, stretch those muscles out a little bit, and it definitely feels better. But I wish I could say just my glutes hurt or just my quads hurt, but no, it all hurts. So if you wanna give this workout a shot, do it. If you wanna make sure that you do it the way that we do so that you do buy yourself a little bit more lunch time, then try Fit Women's Weekly Live out. It's free, go to fitwomensweekly.com. I'll put the link down in the show notes and so that you can actually just hit play and do the full workout with me. So even if you can't do it live, which obviously I've already done it, the workout stays available all the time. So you can go back to previous workouts. I even have created a workout log to make it easy to find past workouts and knock it out. Whether it's the longer version or the 30 minute version of the workout, I promise you, it is a good one. <laughs> So yeah, today I'm recording this on a Tuesday morning. It is weightlifting day. There is not gonna be a single lunch. <laughs> but anywho, I guess I just kind of jumped right into things. Welcome to the podcast, you guys. I'm excited for this particular episode because for the past several weeks, we've been focusing on training specific tools or tips or just information based on top of whether it's nutrition or exercise. And today we're going to change things up a little bit and focus a little bit more, not a little bit more. We're going to focus completely on the mindset of exercise. I know that motivation is really hard for a lot of us because it's fleeting, right? Sometimes you're motivated. Sometimes you're not a body in rest wants to stay at rest. And so it's very hard for us to muster up the discipline in order to stay motivated. But here's the secret. This is why I'm not gonna talk about motivation today. It does have a place in time. However, I'm not gonna talk about getting motivated to work out because I cannot motivate you to exercise. I can inspire you 
to get moving or to try something different. But motivation is something that is self propelled. It comes from within. Nobody else can make you do something. That's the great thing about the world that we live in. Only you can actually take that inspiration from somebody else or, um, decide that the changes that you want to make are worthy of your time and action and actually start making those changes. Only you can motivate yourself and only you can say, my desire to ac accomplish something is greater than my lack of motivation. And I always try to stress that not only to you guys coming from me, but also because I hear people say all the time, I want my spouse to be healthier. I want my mother or my father to be healthier. I want my kids to be healthier. What can I do to get them moving and eating healthier? At the end of the day, you can't do anything. You can educate them. You can help them learn how to make other decisions. You can um, kind of say, wow, you're doing a really good job. I love seeing the decisions that you're making and encourage them. But at the end of the day, you cannot make somebody change. So with that in mind, I'm not going to talk today about how to motivate yourself to work out. Instead, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to actually list four different tips of how to push yourself harder once you actually get your workout going, because that is also just as equally challenging, right? You guys, I'm sitting on, I got to fix my, my seat. And I say that with like air quotes. All right. But when it comes to exercise, if you want to see your body change, if you want to develop more strength, you want to see more muscle, you want to burn body fat, then there's a secret. <laughs> no matter what people try to tell you whether that's influences, influencers or personal trainers that you see online or even some kind of program like the Teleton, for example, where they're trying to tell you, you just have to, it's simple, it's easy, it's a workout that you can do and not break a sweat. Those are lies. In order to see changes with your body, you have to push your body outside of its comfort zone. You have to be a little uncomfortable and you also have to remind yourself it's for a short period of time and that you can do it. But that's easier said than done. So I'm going to share with you guys my four tricks for pushing through your workout so that you actually do get the results that you want to see. So with all that, <laughs> and I will say this is not the original topic that I had in place for that I wanted to talk about today. But yesterday during that lunge workout, I said something I'm going to cover in just a second what it was specifically that I said, because it's actually tip number one where I was like, this is probably something that we can, we should talk about. I don't think, you know, I've talked about in the past how to motivate yourself or try to self motivate yourself to get going, how to stay disciplined, to keep going with a workout program. But I don't know if I've ever actually talked about different ways to actually push during a workout. Um, and so I think that's a really important topic, especially as we're going from the first half of the year, the second half of the year is around the corner. We are almost at month six. And so that's just a really re reminder for yourself and for me that if you set goals for yourself at the start of the year, it is not too late to start on them again. Let's say you did it great for three weeks, but you've kind of fallen off the bandwagon or they've kind of been pushed to the back burner. Start looking at those again and saying like, okay, what is it? I really wanted to achieve this. Why did I want to achieve it? Why did I give up on that goal? And now going into the second half of the year, what can I do to reinstate the goal and re prioritize it? And so maybe these tips will help at least when it comes to your actual workouts. So here's what happened yesterday. And here's tip number one. So I did the longer version of that lunge workout yesterday morning. And so by time it was done, I was tired. My legs were tired as if I had done a very long endurance workout. Um, I had also done some strength training with my morning crew. Our car is in the shop, so I have to walk back and forth from the gym right now, which luckily not anymore. Our car came back out of the shop yesterday afternoon. But at that time, I was just really physically tired and I kept going in my head like, how am I gonna come back into the studio later in the afternoon and do this workout again? Even though it was only for a 30 minute workout, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do it, right? So once I turned the camera on for that afternoon workout, I started chit chatting. Some of my ladies came on live because you do have the option to work out live with me if you're able to make it. And I got to thinking they deserve the same energy and the same effort, obviously, that I put in in that morning crew when I was fresh with my legs, right? I shouldn't give them any less. I don't, they don't deserve any less of me than the crew that was there this that, during the morning. So. I, before the workout even started, I said, I don't know how I'm going to do with this workout. However, 
I am still going to give it everything I have and I'm not going to accept anything less than a 10 from myself in terms of effort is concerned because that's what I expect to get from you guys. And so I didn't know if my 10 for effort would still be able to achieve what I did that morning in terms of how many lunges I could get per round. But by God, I was gonna go into it with everything I could. I was gonna take, I wasn't gonna allow myself to get into that mental headspace of saying, you're tired, you can take extra breaks. To me, I was going to push a 10, whether that meant still moving a little bit slower than I was that morning, but on an effort, perceived effort rating, I was gonna make sure it was a 10. I was not gonna take myself or allow myself to give anything less than that. So my tip to you is grade yourself before a workout. I always ask the clients at the end of a workout, what do you grade yourself on a one to 10 basis? But after yesterday, I'm gonna start actually doing that at the beginning of a workout and say, what are you going to allow from yourself today? When you set that expectation at the beginning of a workout, it's gonna make it a lot easier during that workout to get into the mental headspace of pushing what it is that you are um, allowing yourself to give to that workout. So if you go into it being like, I'm really tired, I'm on my period, I didn't sleep last night, I'm gonna be happy if I give this workout a six then give that workout a six. And you might surprise yourself and find yourself giving a seven or an eight because you already set the, the ladder, right? But if you're having a day where you're like, I slept well, I'm physically capable of doing what I can, I'm not gonna accept anything less than a 10, you're gonna go in with an attitude of, I'm giving it a 10, I'm giving it everything that I have. And you're much more likely to finish that workout saying, I give myself a 10 on that workout. So grade yourself before going into it. It's gonna make it a lot more mentally motivating for you and your body and your mind will talk together and you'll remind yourself throughout the workout. Remember, I said I was gonna give myself a 10 on this. So I really like that tip. I'm gonna start implementing that a little bit more into my own training and into the training for my clients. So pre-grade yourself. Tip number two is remember, you can go up in weight. <laughs> Once you've started a workout, it's natural to stick with that weight choice. And then at the end of the workout, you know, I'll ask clients, how did you, how did you do on that workout? What, what grade do you give yourself? And I used to see the comments a lot of, well, I'm going to give myself a seven because I think I may have been able to go up a little bit on um, my deadlifts or squats or bench press, whatever the exercise is, right? So now I always make it a point during a workout after the first set or maybe the first round, whether we're doing a circuit based style or we're doing you know, five sets of 10 reps, after we kind of get started with things, and I know that everyone is efficiently warmed up, I'll say, how do you feel at this weight? If you feel like you can go heavier, then go heavier. I don't want you finishing the workout saying, oh, I wish I had gone up in weight. Remember, you are not stuck, you're not locked in, you're not married to the weight choices that you make at the start of a workout. So at any time, if you feel, you know, I think I could go up in this, then go up in it. If that means that you might have to come down later on and choose a lighter weight because your form is starting to suffer, that's okay. But at that particular moment, you can change the weights that you use. And I feel like that kind of goes against what we see a lot of times because we'll see trainers post up workouts where it's like, I'm gonna do five sets of 10 reps and you feel like for all five sets that they're using that same weight. That is not always the case. Sometimes you might get it right, but sometimes after set number two or number three, you go, you know, I still have more in the engine and could probably get to 13 or 14 reps versus the 10 reps that I'm supposed to get to. Now you always wanna leave a little bit of in the engine where you can maybe do 11 or 12 reps, but if you are like, no, this is too light, then it's too light, go up. So tip number two, you're not married to your weights. If you feel like you can go up, go up at any time. It could be even in the middle of a set. You can be doing 12 reps of an exercise and after rep six, you're like, this just doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like the stimulus that I'm trying to get out of it. Then stop, go grab your heavier weights and then com complete your set from rep seven to 12 with that new weight. So you're not locked in. And then tip number three, this one I have actually shared before in a podcast episode. And I'm sharing it again because it works. It is one of my favorite training tips. And it sounds so silly that it actually works, but it is the rule that after this round, I just have X amount of rounds left. So this really works better for AMRAPs or something where you're doing a lot of rounds, whether that's eight rounds, maybe even six rounds, up to 10 rounds or even more, 
where you're thinking to yourself, instead of doing, let's say you're doing 10 rounds, okay? And you are through four of them. So naturally you'd probably say, okay, I've done four rounds, I still have six left. Well, this rule instead states that after I do four rounds, I'm gonna say after this round, I only have five more rounds left, or after this round, I am halfway through. So it's subtracting a round and in our head, it makes a difference. It makes it sound a lot more doable. So I'm still taking into consideration that I'm not subtracting a round. I'm saying after this round that I'm getting ready to start or the round that I am in the middle, I only have X amount after it. Uh, this really, really helps for the second half of a workout. So if you are doing 10 rounds, you've already done five, you get to say, okay, after this round, I only have four more rounds left. After this round, I only have three more rounds left. After round eight, you get to say, after this round, I only have one more round left. And it is inspiring. It helps you to keep your mood up because a lot of times these kind of workouts are really hard on us mentally, not just physically. So this is just a little mental trick to uh, convince your mind that you have less left than you actually do. And it makes the time go by a lot faster and makes it seem a lot more doable. So give it a shot. I have you guys, I did this podcast a really long time ago and I still have a lot of you guys messaging me saying, oh my gosh, I tried that round trick and it works. I promise it works. Give it a shot and let me know. And then tip number four, this is more of an internal one. This might work for some people, maybe not work for everybody, but it's who's that voice in your head that you accept criticism from and who motivates you. It needs to be the same person. Maybe I'm that person for some people. I know that I am because I'll have friends be like, oh my God, during this workout, I wanted to go down and wait or I wanted to slow down, but I had you in my head saying, come on, you can do it, right? That person to me is my husband. He is the person that challenges me the most. He knows the potential that I have. He's not afraid to tell me when he knows that I'm not giving my all. So anytime that I'm doing something challenging or outside of my comfort zone, it's not my voice of reasoning because my voice of reasoning is that voice that says, you're tired, you're feeling weak, you wanna go down and grab a weight. I will switch it and I will hear my husband's voice, Dan, telling me, come on, Kendall, suck it up. You are stronger than this. How would you feel? Or he won't say, how would you feel? He actually does tell me this as if, and some reason it works, it's ridiculous. But he'll say, do you think that Tia Claire Toomey would do X, Y, Z? Or do you think Tia Claire Toomey would slow down during this? And y'all, if you don't know who Tia, Tia Claire Toomey is, she is the most amazing CrossFit athlete in the world. She is an amazing woman. And I have absolutely zero ability to compare to hers. But when he brings her into the equation, because I find her an inspiration, that I do push myself harder. So in my head, I won't say, hey, what do I think Tia Claire Toomey would do in this situation? I'll have Dan in his voice telling me the way that he does, do you think that Tia Claire Toomey would blah, 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 and it works. During my 50K, anytime that I started to get tired, I had him in my mind saying, just push it, just go because that's always his philosophy for me when it comes to my road races of just suck it up, you know it's gonna hurt, just keep running with everything that you have. And it works. So find that person that gets under your skin just enough that it's a little bit irritating, but you also know it's coming from a good place and that there's somebody who can actually motivate you to push harder. Because there's some people that you can tell me to get down and do 10 pushups and I'm gonna look at you and say, WTF, no, you get down and do 12 pushups, right? You don't take everybody's criticisms or everybody's inspiration the same, inspirational words the same. So who is your voice of reason? Who is your motivational coach that when you hear their voice, you are going to want to challenge yourself a little bit harder? So some people have that, some people don't. If you do not have that person, I would love to be that person. Go to filmmansweekly.com, sign up for Fitman's Weekly uh, Live, and let me train you. Let me be that voice that pushes, pushes you a little bit harder and see if we can have that relationship. That's what a good trainer is, right? It is somebody who celebrates your successes, but also is somebody who's not afraid to say, you can do better because we all can do better from time to time. And we need to have that person in our lives that isn't afraid to call us out when we're not going to the effort that we should be for the goals that we want to accomplish. So speaking of Fitwins Weekly Live, real fast before I sign off, I do wanna mention the fact that in July, 
July 10th starts our new Summer Shred Challenge. This is an eight week program I put together every single year. This is only our third year doing it with Fit Women's Weekly Live because Fit Women's Weekly Live started in 2020. And I am so excited. This is gonna be the biggest, most comprehensive challenge that I've done to date. I've talked to all of my previous clients who have done it before. I said, what did you love about it? What else would you like to see with the challenge? And I'm actually implementing those things. And I'm gonna be sharing more details of that during the uh, coming weeks. And with that also, I did this last year, once a week starting in June, I'm gonna be doing a free live workout on the Fit Women's Weekly Facebook page that is open to anybody. It'll be a 30 minute workout, once a week, it will be one of our live Fit Women's Weekly live workouts so that you can understand what's entailed, what's involved, and you can see, is this something that you wanna do? But just a little bit of what is included on top of just working out with me, this is a challenge. So you get daily nutrition challenges, daily little fitness challenges to make you move more throughout the day. You have a training calendar to try to work through to make sure that you are pushing yourself with your workouts. You're increasing your volume a little bit more than what you've been doing to get the results that you want. I also have the six rules of nutrition that if you want to see your body change with body composition, you want to burn fat, increase your strength. What are the six nutritional nutrition rules that you should follow as well as 25 brand new recipes that have never been seen. You're going to have five breakfast recipes, five lunches, five dinners, and five snacks, which is going to be put together in a beautiful PDF cookbook. You also get a training partner, AKA a workout wifey that'll help keep you accountable. You're gonna have a private tracking sheet so that you can track your macros if you want. You can also track your progress pictures. You can track your weight daily or weekly if you want, um, as well as tracking your sleep, your stress, your energy levels that day, all the different elements that can come into your performance. And so I'm really, really excited. Those are just a couple of things. There's actually a lot more. I'm talking cooking shows, grocery store tours, shopping halls, all this stuff. This is fitness, this is nutrition, and this is mindset. Once a week, I do give a mindset coach, coaching chat so that we sit down once a week on an additional coaching call. I answer any questions and I give you the pep talk because my challenges are not, never something that I just want you to sign up for and forget about. I want you to sign up for eight weeks and commit to the eight weeks. I want you to see what you can do in eight weeks. I want you to prove to yourself of how badass you can be and surprise yourself at the gains that you can make by the end of it. And so I would love for you to consider it. Registration is not gonna be open for an, uh, probably three to four more weeks, but once it does, there will be an early bird list and the people that are on that list will have the first come first serve for signing up. We are only accepting um, a hundred new members for this challenge. So definitely do not push it off. So you guys, thank you for hanging out with me. The best way, if you really want to start, if you're curious about the summer shred, the best way to get the best deal is to go into Fit Ones Weekly, link down below to try it out, sign up for Fit Ones Weekly Live, come try it out for 14 days, and then go ahead and commit to Fit, uh, Fit Women's Weekly Live. That's gonna be the biggest deal because our current members will have a discounted price on the actual challenge as a thank you for being members. So that's definitely the best opportunity, the best deal, and I'm always very open with that. I don't want anyone to pass it up. So if you're thinking like, holy crap, that is one heck of a challenge, then go try Fit Women's Weekly Live, go ahead and get into the group, and then the challenge itself will only cost you $80 uh, on top of the membership fee instead of the price that it will be, which will be, it's not gonna be crazy expensive, but it's still gonna be in quite a bit more than what they will be paying. So there you go, steal of a deal, you guys. All right, as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below if you have any questions or comments, and if you have any mental tricks for boosting your own motivation during a workout, not motivation to work out, I would love to hear it. Now I will share those for sure. Or you can slide into my DMs, Kindle Boyle Fitness, and share it with me. Then if you're listening to this on the podcast platform, make sure to subscribe to whatever platform it is that you're listening to and leave a review. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will be back on Friday with a Friday Fit Quickie. And yeah, you guys, keep it, keep it real, keep it strong, and push outside your comfort zone. All right, bye you guys. Thank you.